Ciao friends, welcome to the third episode of The Whiteboard. In this series, we analyze uh, DAX concepts uh, from a different perspective, trying to take a look at these concepts in a more graphical way. Today, we're going to talk about the context transition. We have seen the filter context and the row context in the previous episodes. Now we will see what happens when you have a calculate or a measure reference in your code and you have a row context active. Let's go to the whiteboard. In this example I prepared, I have a measure that shows the maximum amount of sales for the customers considered in each cell of the report. What does it mean? We see that, for example, for Contoso in 2019, the amount of sales for a single customer, the maximum amount of sales for a single customer is 19,000. So what happens when we execute this code? The presence of the measure reference in this code, the sales amount measure reference, is triggering a context transition. The context transition happens when you write calculate, the calculate statement, in presence of a row context. And a measure reference always has an implicit calculate, so we don't have to write calculate to get the context transition here. My goal is not to explain the context transition in detail, but to show you graphically what does it mean. And so if I move to the whiteboard, I copied here the same uh, snapshot of the report we have seen with our number 19,000 for Contoso 2019. We have a copy of uh, the definition of the measure, max by customer, and we also see that the tables involved in this calculation are two tables in the model. The customer table, which is the table we are going to iterate here, and the sales table. These tables are connected from uh, a one-to-many relationship between customer and sales. Now, what happens when we have an iterator? We have seen in the previous episodes that the customer table is filtered by the filter context and the row context iterates the table that contains the rows that are visible through the filter context. So let's just, uh, let's just do a quick recap. We have an initial filter context defined by the two columns uh, uh, Contoso and 2019 for the year. So I draw here the two tables that represent the filter, one for the brand and one for the year. And of course, we have uh, Contoso here and we have 2019 here. In this initial filter context, my customer table is filtered. And guess what? Because we are not filtering any column of uh, the customer table, the customer table is iterated for all the rows of the table because uh, if you take a look at the columns, we have the brand uh, column here is filtering the product table, which is not, in the, uh, not connected to the customer table here. And the date year is filtering the date table, which is again um, a table that filters the sales table because we have, of course, we have a date table here, we have another uh, product table here, those tables are connected to sales, but we are not filtering the customer table that we are iterating now. So what happens at this point? The entire, the entire customer table is iterated by this uh, table reference. So at this point, we have a row context for each row of the customer table. And in each row of the customer table, we execute the expression sales amount. What does it mean? The expression sales amount is evaluated in a temporary calculated column for each customer we have in the customer table. But at this point, the filter context where this sales amount measure is evaluated is not just the filter context we have with brand and year, because the context transition transforms the current row context. So let's, for example, consider the first row. We, when we are in the first row of the table, the, the row context includes all the columns of the table and of the table that we are iterating. And the content of the row context is uh, copied into the filter context. What does it mean? We have an additional table that is created here. Let me draw this in, in green because this is the customer table. 
And because we were iterating the entire customer table that had all the columns of the customer table, we have here a copy of all the columns just for one row. So the table we include in the filter contest has all the columns of the customer table just for the customer that we were iterating. So we have the customer name, the customer key, the customer city, the customer country, and so on. In this filter context, sales amount is evaluated, and the result is stored here. So the first row is the amount of sales for the brand and the year that we were filtering and the customer that we had in the row context. Now, because we had a context transition that transformed the row context into filter context, during the execution of the sales amount measure, we have no row context. Once the context transition happens, we no longer have, for the duration of that evaluation, we no longer have an active row context, which means that in the definition of the measure sales amount, we cannot use a column reference to the customer table because we no longer have that, um, that row context. In other words, we can imagine that during the evaluation of uh, this uh, measure for this uh, row context, what happens in reality? The entire row context thing is gone. And we just have a filter that corresponds to the row context we had at the beginning. And of course, this operation repeats for every row of the table customer. At the end, so let's go back here. At the end, we have an aggregation max so once all the customer have been iterated and the sales amount has been computed for every customer, we get the maximum value for the temporary calculated column that has been created. And so this is the way the row context work in the, the works in the context transition. But if you think for a moment, because we were filtering a table, all the columns of the table have been copied into the filter context. This could be expensive. Um, this could be also, this could also trigger other, um, other, other side effects that we will discuss in other episodes, but again, it could be expensive. And usually we say filter columns and iterate columns, not tables. Now, when you iterate a table that like in this case has a one-to-many relationship with other tables, Actually, there is an internal optimization so that in this case, the customer key, which is the key column of the table, is actually the only column that is copied in the, into the filter context. But again, this is just an optimization. Conceptually, we are uh, copying the entire table. So the semantic is the entire table is in the filter context. But when you uh, want to optimize your code, maybe changing the granularity of your evaluation, you can, of course, iterate just the column. And so if we go back to the report, I prepared another example, maximum by country, where we used this other definition, uh, where we use the, um, the list of the countries of the customer. So instead of iterating customer by customer, we just iterate the list of the unique countries where we have customers. So the iterator is shorter, but the amount computed is for each country. We have a completely different semantic, but what happens when we take a look at the, at the filter context for our calculation? So let's copy this uh, definition here that I want to use in my whiteboard. Let's go back to the whiteboard where I want to paste this uh, code. Let me just reduce this a little bit. And let's start from this. So I want to, oops, not this one. I want to remove this. And we can start from this other definition. Okay, so it should be enough. Let's move it so that it is visible. Okay, so the principle is very similar. Uh, let's say that we want to uh, iterate this Contoso. So we want to get this. Of course, the numbers we have here are different. If we look at the uh, result in the, in the Power BI desktop, File, you see that for Contoso 2019, we actually have 353817, so it's a different number. Let's copy this, so let's go here, and let's copy this table, and we replace the previous one. So we go here, and we replace 
the table we had before. So let's see if I can replace it. And so let's go now remove this one. Let's see if I, I should have repaired this better in advance, but now we should be able to work. Okay, so let's say that I want to evaluate Contoso. Uh, what happens when we evaluate this cell? Again, the initial filter context is always the same. We have only two filters. I will shorten this to Contoso and 2019, which is the year and the brand. The iteration starts, but this time the iteration is not over the entire customer table, is over the unique values distinct of just one column, customer country. So customer country is just one column here. So imagine that we have a list of the unique values of the country here, and the row context iterates each of these countries. So let's say we have 20 countries, we have 20 row contexts. Now remember, this time the table has only one column, so what happens when the context transition, the measure reference triggers a context transition, the context transition transforms the current row context into filter context. So this time, just one row and one column is copied here. So we have country, and we have, for example, Canada. And then we have all the other countries we have in the list. And so every time for every row, we have the same brand, the same year and a different country. And once again, in this filter context, we don't have um, other, other column. We just have the three, sorry, we don't have a row context. So in the filter context, we have two filters that come from the external filter context. When we evaluated the cell, we have one filter coming from the context transition and the row context is gone while we evaluate the sales amount measure. Once again, sales amount is computed for every country this time, and at the end, the maximum aggregation over this column is computed, and the result of this max is written here in the cell that we have seen. This operation is conceptually repeated for every cell of your report. And this time, the only difference we have seen is that if the row context is iterating only one column, you bring into the filter context only one column. If you're iterating a table with two, three, four columns, all those columns that you have in that table are moved into the filter context during the evaluation of the measure in the context transition. So we have seen that the context transition helps you creating smart calculations in a small amount of lines, and it is very powerful, but it has to be um, it has to be mastered, understanding the difference between row context, filter context, and transformation of the row context into a filter context. Remember, when the context transition happens, the entire content of the table that you are iterating is copied into the filter context, and for the duration of that evaluation, the row context is gone. You just have a filter context at that point, and you can write other calculations in DAXA creating maybe new row context, even though it's never a good idea to create nested iterators for a performance. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode and take a look at the next uh, episode for the whiteboard. Enjoy DAX. Mm -hmm.